Welcome back to section four of chapter six. In this section, uh, we get to look at the first of two sections on polar coordinates. Polar coordinates are a um, completely different way of graphing that actually has a lot of real world applications. Now, unlike parametric equations, where we're still dealing with like the same x, y ordered pair, polar coordinates don't. Um, it still ends up graphed the same, but we end up using polar graph paper, which is actually what's in the background of this screen right here. So uh, it's exciting. Uh, today we're going to be learning more about the um, like what they are, and then the next lesson we're going to be looking at graphing polar graphs, and that's where we get like some of these crazy flower designs and all sorts of weird stuff. So it's a lot of fun. Our learning targets today, we can convert between polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates. Uh, rectangular coordinates are our normal Euclidean coordinates that we know and love and have used for years. Um, plot points with given polar coordinates. Give all polar coordinates of a point and identify if polar descriptions describe the same point graph polar equations using a grapher. Again, that's more next time. Um, a grapher is just a graphing calculator um, and um, or Desmos. Desmos is easy. You just type in the equation just like it says and it gives it to you. Um, on a calculator, you just change the mode to polar. It's right by where the parametric mode was. Um, and then you just type it in as it says. Um, then convert between polar and rectangular equations and graph the equations. So our polar coordinate system. So we still have to describe points using two different pieces. Um, in the rectangular system, we have the horizontal part and the vertical part, and that's how it's graphed. Um, in a polar system, we graph the points r comma theta, where r is the distance from the center, the origin, the pole, which is generally where you are. Um, radar does this, like the, the plane or the ship is the center, and it's looking to see um, what's um, out there, um, how far is it from where they are, and at what angle is it. And so that's the r comma theta. The graph paper or the graphing system that we use is it looks like this, where we have the angles and then we have all these concentric circles of different radii so that we can go out a certain number of units. Now, these still have the same uh, rectangular coordinates, like this point here is still 5 comma 0. Um, but it's a little bit harder to see what some of those middle points are. So, but graphing on this with polar coordinates, it's a lot easier because we can see the angles and we can see that distance from the center. So if we had the point P, that's two comma pi over three. So it's gonna be uh, two away. So it'll be on that second concentric circle. And then the distance pi over, or the angle pi over three puts us right here is P because we have this angle theta and we have this radius of two. Um, <clears throat> we have the point negative one comma three pi over four. Uh, let's see, I put P in red. Let's go blue for Q. So we have 3 pi over 4, so we would 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 is going to be this line, but we're going negative 1. So we're actually going backwards to get this point Q. Could we have found another point that was the same? We could have, and we'll actually take a look at that in a minute, because that could be a radius 1 only at uh, 7 pi over 4 for our angle, or negative pi over 4 and a radius of 1. 
Um, so there are actually a couple different ways that we can write each of the points based on the radius and the angle because we could go around the circle over and over and over again and we'll see that more in just a minute how about three comma negative 45 degrees well, we can use degrees too it doesn't have to be radians we can go between this one this graph that i have here happens to be labeled in radians but it could have been labeled in degrees um this graph by the way i just uh it's just a blank graph from Desmos. You can change Desmos to use polar coordinates in the little menu up in the top right. But negative 45 degrees is going to put us again along this angle. And we need to go three to so go one, two, three right out here to get the point R. So Q and R are along the same, the same line, the same bearing away they're the same direction away from the pole the center the origin um, they're just different distances so how do we find all the coordinates so if we have say 3 pi over 3 um, there's a few different other coordinates that we have we could go around the circle again so we could have 3 comma then pi over three plus two pi. But we could keep going around the circle over and over and over and over and over and over and over. So it could be two pi n. But we could also have a radius of negative three. Where would we get that one? Well, we'd have to be on the opposite side of the circle. A full 180 degrees away, um, which means it would be negative 3 times pi over 3 plus just 1 pi would get us there. Um, and that's just for that one point. But then from here, we could go around the circle from this point. So we could have plus 2 pi n because we could go around it over and over and over. Notice it's not just plus pi n because that would take us from one of the angles to the other angle and back, but we have to make sure that our radius is positive or negative as well. So we have these values. Um, the uh, formula for these, like we can simplify these a little bit, the formula will. Uh, personally, this first one, I kind of like like that. The second one, um, we could factor out a pi to give negative 3. And then we have pi over 3 plus, factor out a pi, we get 1 plus 2n times pi. I mean, that one I think is a little bit nicer, but they like to go a little bit further. They're going to put them over a common denominator. Um, and then factor out a pi. So the common denominator would be 3 here. And then when we factor out a pi, we'll have 1 plus 6n pi. And then over here, we'd factor out negative 3. Then we can put it over 3. So we'd have 1 plus... That's 3 times 1 plus 2n, so that would be 3 plus 6n pi. And then 1 plus 3 is just 4, so we'd have negative 3 comma 4 plus 6n pi over 3. Um, these are the same. They're more simplified. I don't particularly agree. I like personally, I like to see this angle right there um, because that's the angle you're talking about. Like with the, the final one that we ended up with, you really have to kind of look for that standard angle that you're using. Um, but 
all the points. We have r equals theta plus 2n pi, or negative r equals theta plus 2n plus 1 pi, um, which is uh, which is actually these two that we were looking at that I like to begin with. Um, <laughs> um, converting coordinates. So going between rectangular and polar and polar and rectangular, we have a few equations to get them back and forth um, because the radius so we have radius times theta. The radius is the distance from the origin to the point. And so that we could use Pythagorean theorem, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Um, and then the angle there is the angle, the slope of the line, um, which involves the tangent because it's x or it's y over x. Um, and so we have these. Um, generally speaking, the this side is going to be polar. I almost just used my finger to try to erase that little part of the R like I was writing on a board. Polar to rectangular. And this side is going to be rectangular to polar. Um, so polar to rectangular, rectangular to polar. Um, the polar to rectangular is easy because you just go, you use the two things you're given, r and theta, uh, and you just plug them in. Uh, the rectangular to polar is where we get a little bit more equation. So let's take a look at some. So here we have a polar uh, point. We have three comma five pi over six. So we can uh, make the rectangular point. So P, it's just R cosine theta. So that's three cosine five pi over six, comma, then three sine theta. So sine five pi over six. Um, five pi over six, the cosine of that is going to be negative root 3 over 2 because it's just before we get to 180. So we have 3 times, so that's negative root 3 over 2. So this will be negative 3 root 3 over 2, comma. And then sine is going to be positive 1 half times 3 is 3 halves. That's our... Um, That's the uh, the rectangular for that. Um, it doesn't always have to be radians. In fact, it doesn't always have to be a value that we know. Here we have two comma negative 200 degrees. Negative 200 degrees is not one of the values that we know from the unit circle. So, no, oh, I meant to have that be Q. Q is that. So Q is going to be 2 cosine negative 200 degrees, comma, 2 sine negative 200 degrees. And then we can just plug that right into a calculator um, to get 2 cosine of negative 200 degrees is about negative 1.88. And two sine negative 200 degrees is about 0 0.68. So that's how we could get to the um, to that value. Uh, if we wanted to go from rectangular to polar, and rectangular to polar is a little bit tricky because remember polar coordinates can have multiple things. So we have negative one comma one. So we know that r squared will equal x squared plus y squared, so 1 plus 1. So r squared equals 2. So r equals root 2, but it's actually plus or minus root 2. 
and then tangent of theta equals y over x, so that's 1 over negative 1, which is just negative 1. So we can do the inverse tangent, or in this case it's actually one that we know. Where does tangent equal negative 1? It equals negative 1, um, well it equals 1 at the 45s. Negative 1 would be in the second and the fourth quadrant. So theta would equal 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Which one is it? Well, remember we have 2. And notice we also have plus or minus root 2 for the r. One of them will go with each. Which one goes with which one? Well, we have to look at the quadrant. We have the point negative 1 comma 1. We're in the second quadrant, which means the positive radius will go with the second quadrant angle. So root 2 comma 3 pi over 4. And then we could go plus 2 and pi if we need to find all of them. Or then we have negative root 2 comma 7 pi over 4. And then we could add the 2n plus 1 pi, again, if we need to find all of them. If we're only finding in between 0 and 2 pi, we don't need the plus 2n pi's. Um, so that's how we can find both of those, though, because we actually end up with two answers, and we have the two ways. Um, how about if we have negative 3 comma 0? So here, r squared r squared will equal negative 3 squared is 9 plus 0. So r squared equals 9, so r equals plus or minus 3. Um, and the theta, or tangent of theta, is y over x, which is 0 over negative 3, which is 0. Where does tangent equals 0? Tangent equals 0 at 0. And pi, it's it's on the x-axis, tangent equals 0. So theta could equal 0 and pi. Where are we looking? Well, negative 3, 0, if we graphed it, is there. So that's at pi. So we'll have 3 comma pi. And then we could go plus 2 pi um, plus 2 pi n. I just noticed something here. Um, and then we could also have negative 3 comma 0 plus 2 pi n. Um, notice that's plus 2 pi n for both of them because up here I noticed I, I had done the 2n plus 1. Uh, we actually don't need that plus 1 because we've already added that to get the 7 pi over 2. The plus 1 was to get it from the 3 pi over 4 to the 7 pi over 4. Um, so being that we have both angles already, we don't need that. It's just plus 2 pi n for both of them. Um, and again, that's only if we care about multiple times around the circle. Um, how about converting equations? Converting equations is going to use the same stuff, um, the same equations, uh, except that sometimes we'll use uh, both of them for both. It gets a little bit weird sometimes. Um, luckily, the equations that we'll be converting today aren't all that complicated. Um, again, we're spending, we have two sections on polar coordinates, so we're not getting too far into them. Uh, so, we could have something like r equals 4 secant theta. Um, this is what a, a polar equation looks like. It's r equals something with theta in it. So if you were to graph this, on, if you wanted to graph it on Desmos, you would type it in just like it is. Um, r equals 4 secant theta. If you wanted to graph it on your graphing calculator, you would switch it to polar mode in the mode, it's the same place we went to switch to parametric last time. Um, and 
when you did that, you go to y equals, and it'll be r equals. Your variable button will give you theta. And so you would just type in, well, you can't type in four secant theta because the calculator doesn't have a secant. But remember, secant is 1 over cosine. So you go 4 divided by cosine theta. And it would show you what this is. Um, so to convert it, though, we're going to divide this one because we don't have that. We know that we know that x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, r squared equals x squared plus y squared, and tangent of theta equals y over x. Those are the things that we really know. So when I divide by that secant theta, we have r over secant theta equals 4. Well, remember, secant is 1 over cosine. And so if we have 1 over secant, that's 1 over 1 over cosine, which is just r cosine theta equals 4. r cosine theta is x. x equals 4. This is a vertical line at 4. Check it out. Graph it. It'll be a vertical line at x equals 4. Either way you do it, r equals 4 secant theta, vertical line at x equals 4. Um, if we want to go the other direction, say we have this x minus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 13, um, we're going to use these x y, and y's and we're going to change them into the r cosine thetas and stuff like that. And we're going to make it r equal something with theta in it. Um, so before we get into doing this, looking at this equation, what do we have? If you don't recognize this, this is an equation of a circle. Its center is at 3 comma 2, and the radius is the square root of 13. Uh, we'll be dealing a lot more with this uh, when we get to conic sections. Um, how could you graph this in a calculator? Uh, you'd have to solve for y. You'd have to have y equals something. So you'd move over the x minus 3 squared, you'd square root the whole thing, and then you'd add 2. Um, it's not particularly pretty, um, but it is. Uh, in Desmos, you would type it in exactly as it's written, and it would graph it for you. Um, and speaking of not entirely pretty, sometimes when you're converting between uh, polar and rectangular coordinates, um, you get things that look really super simple in one and are crazy difficult in the other. Um, and that it goes both ways. Sometimes the rectangular is easy, but the polar coordinates are really weird. And sometimes the polar is really super easy, but the rectangular coordinate, the re rectangular equation is really weird. Um, it happens. Not so much today. The ones today, again, are going to be fairly, fairly easy. So what are we going to do? We're going to uh, first multiply everything out. So x minus 3 squared is not x squared minus 3 squared. Don't be that guy. It's x minus 3 times x minus 3. So we get x squared minus 6x plus 9. And then same thing for y. y squared minus 4y plus 4 equals 13. Um, we can look at changing some stuff. So we have... We have a nine, so we can subtract nine, minus nine, minus four, minus four, 13 minus nine minus four actually equals zero. So that'll, that'll work out for us. Um, I'm going to move the x squared and the y squared together. So we have x squared plus y squared minus six x minus four y equals zero. All right, what can we do? x squared plus y squared, that equals r squared minus 6x. Well, x is r cosine theta. So minus 6r cosine theta. Then minus 4y is r sine theta. r sine theta equals 0. Hey, we have some stuff equals 0. Cool. Let's factor this. Um, all that we can really do is factor out an r. So we get r and then times r minus 6 cosine theta 
minus 4 sine theta equals 0. So this leaves us with two options. Either r equals 0, which is the just the center of a circle, it's your pole, or r minus 6 cosine theta minus 4 sine theta equals 0. Um, and in fact, if we had graphed this circle, um, r equals 0, that's the origin. That's actually on the circle. So it actually works out. Um, our equation, we want it to be r equals something. So r equals, we can add these to the other side, 6 cosine theta plus 4 sine theta. And if we graph this, we could just type it right into Desmos. We could use our calculator in polar uh, mode. Um, we actually get a circle centered at 3 comma 2 with e the radius of root 13. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of crazy how that works. Um, we'll be getting into um, how we could tell what it every what things are, um, but not so much in this section. Um, but that's how we convert. Notice we use the r squared and the x and the y in this one because that's what we had. That's what we needed. What if you didn't? What if you just went, if you changed it from the very beginning, you had x minus 3, you changed that into r cosine theta minus 3 squared, and then plus r sine theta minus 2 squared, and then did it from there. You'd multiply. You'd end up with a an r squared cosine theta plus r squared sine theta. You'd factor out an r squared, cosine theta plus sine theta equals 0 based on the Pythagorean identity, um, and you would have come out to be exactly the same thing. So just because we substituted it in when we did does not mean that you could not do that at a different time in the process. Um, it works out the same each time. So um, lastly, finding the distance. We're going to be finding the distance between polar coordinates. Now this is one of those um, things that's actually uh, it's actually one of those fairly useful things. Why? So radar detects two airplanes at the same altitude. Their polar coordinates are eight miles, comma, 110 degrees and five miles, comma, 15 degrees. Um, how far apart are the airplanes? Radar. Radar sends out signals and it gets, they get bounced back and it's able to tell you the distance away and the direction. That's a polar coordinate. That's how you get these things. These are all polar. You see them in um, uh, for air, airplanes like we see, either in the airplane or um, the tower, um, ships, submarines, um, anything that uses like radar where it's bouncing the sound off of something. Um, because from where you are, which is the pole, which is right there, it gives you a distance and a direction. So um, it gives you the stuff in polar coordinates. And so we have, um, let's say the radar is from the control tower and we have these two planes, we need to know how far apart they are. That seems like something an airport control tower might need to know. So how do we do that? Well, for our specific example, we've got a diagram looks kind of like this. So here we are right in the center, that's the radar, and we've got one that's five out this way at 15 degrees and eight out this way at 110 degrees. And we want to find the distance between them. Well, this makes a triangle. How can we find that side of a triangle? Law of cosines. Remember law of cosines, c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. Well, the a squared and the b squared are 5 and 8. And that angle in between them, we have 110 for the big one, we have 15 for the small one. We can subtract to get 95 degrees there. So this distance between c squared is going to equal 5 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 
times 5 times 8 times a cosine of 95 degrees. C squared equals 25 plus 64 minus 80 cosine 95 degrees. 25 plus 64 is 89 minus 80 cosine 95 degrees. So when we um, 80 times cosine 95 degrees gives us a value. 89 minus that value gives us a value that's c squared. And we can square root to get that c is going to equal about 9.8 miles. So these planes are 9.8 miles apart. Um, so that's taking something that we've done and putting it in. It's like, hey, that's a, another application for why law of cosines is actually fairly useful um, in these polar coordinates. So next time we will be looking at the graphs of these, which we'll use the graphing calculator. Like it's not going to be graphing a lot of these things by hand. Um, if we were spending a semester on this topic, then we would do some of that, but not so much when we're just doing a couple, a couple little sections on it. So I will see you in class for some awesome activities. Uh, until then, keep working problems, keep asking questions, and as always, happy mathing.